Okay, what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to make what's called a sub VI, which is how to turn your code you've written into a, a modular unit of, of code that you can reuse. Um, so we want to bundle all of this code into one little icon on the block diagram. Not only does that make your block diagram cleaner, but you can then uh, use the same bit of code multiple times in the same program. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean there. Um, but first, how do you how do you make this into a sub VI? Uh, well, first, I'm going to just save save our code here, which you should do frequently, so you don't lose it um, when uh, if your computer crashes or something. I'm just going to call this uh, make X because it's making X points. Um, and then to turn it into a sub VI. Um, we want to go to our front panel here and we want to 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 make controls be input terminals to our sub vi and um, indicators be output terminals the uh, sort of wiring diagram of, is up here for what so this is this is what this is the picture that's going to show up on the block diagram this is just the default picture we'll make our own here in a second and this is all the input and output wires so if I want this first input wire to be X min, I'll click on that white square, click on X min, and you'll see it turns orange, the color of the uh, data type there, which is a double. I'll make the next input wire X max. Um, I'll make the next one points. I'm actually going to change points here. We currently have it as a double, which means it can have decimal values. We want this to be an integer though, because you can only have integer number of points defining your your function. So I'm gonna change the representation representation of that to a um, uh, unsigned, uh, yeah, 32 bit integer should be big enough. So now it's blue. All the blue wires here are just integer numbers. Um, and I'm gonna wire that up to the third input here. And then uh, the outputs should be on the right hand side. So I'll just have our one output be our array of X points. And, you know, actually I'm going to make one more output, which is our DX value, that spacing we calculated in between each of the points in our, um, in our, in our list there. We'll call that DX. This is going to be important when we do some calculus, um, some numeric calculus later. So right now, dx should be equal to 0.25 because that's the distance between our points. And uh, yeah, that's what it is. So it's always good to run it and check and make sure it's working. Uh, and I'm going to make that be another output. I'm going to just put that on the bottom terminal. doesn't matter. Now we've got all our inputs and outputs. So now, um, if I... Uh, make a new VI here. So we got a new front and block uh, back, um, back panel here. I can use this this make X sub VI we just saved. And to open it, I can go down here to select a VI. Get our make X here. Put it down on the screen, and you can see it's got input and output terminals just like uh, the other functions we've been using but you don't see all that background code. If I right click on a terminal, I can make controls and indicators with the same names as the terminal names. Um, so I'm just gonna do that. Oops, not a control. I wanna make indicators on this side. And what you'll see is that this program Here's the front panel. It's already got those numbers uh, typed in that we wanted, but we can change it. Um, it works exactly the same as our previous program because we're using our previous program. Um, so we've done nothing here. This is this is no better than what we had before, um, except that now we can take this modular code and copy and paste it and generate another list of numbers if we wanted to. So we can make a X-Men 2, 
and the next min max and uh, two and, and and so forth and, and it, it can be compl it can be completely different than our first function and it'll still run you don't even have to wire up all the outputs but there's our uh, our x min, x max, and points for our first list of x points. And I can make the second one be some different set of numbers and use it again. Okay, so that's, that's all we've done. Super simple. Um, I don't want it to have this default sub vi look to it. I want it to be a little bit more recognizable when it's on the uh, when it's when it's on the block diagram like this. So if we go back to our original make x, which I still have open here, block diagram in the front front panel, go back up to the upper right here. I can um, I can right click on this uh, icon here and go to edit icon, and now I'm in this like super simple uh, graphical editor deal here. Um, and I can, uh, you know, get different colors here. I can draw whatever I want. What I want to do is, I think, delete, um, delete everything that's there and fill it with some other color. Um, I guess white is fine. It kind of blends into the block diagram a little bit when it's white. Um, so maybe I'll use like a slightly different color, something kind of maybe bluish. And uh, instead of, I can do a drawing here with single pixels if I want. I'm just going to go to icon text and just call it uh, make... And then let's do X on the next line there. So make X. Um, and now it's easier to, th this is what it's going to look like. And it's going to be easier to recognize. So if I open up my other program that I just made that uses make X, you can see it's, it's kind of automatically updated it um, to look like that. Okay. So this is going to make it a lot easier to plot functions and so forth. Um, I'm just going to actually uh, use this auto clean up there. There we go. Make those wires a little bit cleaner. Um, and then when we, when we make our whole program here, we, it's, we want to go kind of from left to right without going up and down and, and so forth. Um, so it's easier to read and um, and it's a lot easier to do that if you make these sub VIs. So I don't actually need this DX yet, so I'm just going to delete it. It's still, the terminal's still there if we need it. And now I can re-add our make Y here. Um, and I'll show you a different way to make sub VIs uh, for the make Y. Because let's say, you know, this, this is all well and good if you know what your sub VI is going to look like beforehand, but what if you make an elaborate code and then you want to make chunks of it into sub VIs later. So how do you do that? Um, well, here we go. Let's go ahead and make our Y values here and, I'll, and then I'll show you how to do that. So here's your X points. To make our Y values, we want to take each X point and do whatever mathematical operation. Let's make a sine function this time. Um, to make a sine function, it's not actually in the numeric tab, it's in the mathematics tab. Go to mathematics, go to elementary, um, go to uh, sine function, drop that down. And now what we're going to be plotting here is y equals sine of x. And I can make that y points and I can go to our front panel here 
and make a graph like we did before, an XY graph. Um, to plot on the XY graph, we want to make a cluster. We want to go to the cluster tab, make a bundle, bundle the X points on top, Y points on bottom, and um, you know, there we go. Um, so when I run this, looks pretty messy, obviously. You need quite a few points to make a smooth looking sine function. Let's make 100 points. It's a part of a sine function. I need to make my x max bigger. There you go. We've got ourselves a, a sine function we can plot over whatever range that we want. Um, okay, so I've got this bit of code, and maybe I want to bundle all of that together uh, to make a make y sub vi. Or specifically a make sign sub vi. Um, and uh, maybe this, you know, actually, first let's add a few more inputs just to make it more complicated. Um, so I could do a sine kx function where we have some different wavelength. Uh, k is the wave number, so it's actually one over the wavelength. But if you just multiply x, by some constant, you change the period of oscillation. Let's make another control. Doesn't matter if it's inside or outside the loop. Call that K. Now when we plot it, if we change K, we change the period of this sine function. That's useful. Um, and uh, let's make this whole thing into a sub vi now. Uh, so to do that, just going to kind of isolate the bit of code that I want to make into a sub vi on the block diagram. I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to go to edit create sub vi you can see it bundled all of that into a little sub vi for us and if i double click on that i can open it and it'll have its own front and, and, and back panel with the code that we had there it might get some of the names wrong you can retype those and you have to resave that so you can open it later to uh, make a uh, sine function. You can go to that front panel. It's already got the terminals wired up for you this time because they were going in and out of your selected region when you made the sub VI. But you probably want to edit the icon. Um, so let's do the same thing here. Let's delete. Um, let's delete the words. Let's fill it with uh, uh, some other color here. There we go. Icon. Let's do make sign. Actually, I'll just put it in the formula. KX. Okay. Um, save it, go back to our main program, and now we've got all, all of this here. Um, you can edit all the ter input terminals and so forth. This doesn't have to be permanent. And actually, I, I want to do that because I want to make our program look cleaner. I want it to just go left to right. So I don't actually want to even display these X points. Um, and I'm just going to put this right here. And move all this over. Okay, so instead of doing all this branching stuff, um, I want to have the x values be both an input to make sign 
and uh, an output at the same at the same time. So if we go into this sub VI, um, I'm going to just copy this Y points array, call it X points out. We'll call this X points in. We want those to just be the same values, so I'm just going to wire X points in straight to X points out. Uh, on the front panel then, I want to make the X points out be the top terminal. So we'll disconnect the current terminal. Right click, disconnect this terminal. Wired into X points out. Wire Y points into the next terminal. Okay, so then when we go back to our main program here, we've got X points out and Y points here. Which allows us to uh, make this a little bit simpler. X points out, Y points. And now we've avoided all of those branching wires and, and so forth that we had before. Um, so this program is really easy to read and what I would recommend you do is make labels for what each parts of the program does even though this program is super simple. So here you can double click say, uh, you know, generate X points of function. And maybe because we have those labels, we need to make things a little bit bigger here. Give us ourselves a little bit of space. And here you can say, generate Y points of function. or whatever helps you remember what each part of the program does. And you just simply go from inputs to outputs in a straight line here, and it's easy to follow uh, what's doing what. Okay, so that's how we make sub-VIs. And uh, next time we'll, we'll make a, uh, um, some, some more interesting functions uh, and get to our wave simulator.